Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this video, I'm going to show you some pretty cool new widgets for Edge TX. Just recently, I was contacted by a gentleman by the name of Offer Shmuley from Israel, and he sent me a link to some widgets that he's created for Edge TX. And it turns out he also makes some of the widgets that are on the stock SD card including the Lost Model Finder by RSSI and the Bat Check widget. So he sent me this email showing me where to download the widgets. And he said, hey, can you take a look at these and maybe explain these widgets on your channel? Because we're just afraid that people just don't know about them. And I thought, well, I'll take a look. Of course, you know, I'm always interested in stuff going on with Edge. So I went to the website, downloaded the widgets and installed them. And I kind of like them. I'll lead off by letting you guys know this is open source. So Offer is making these available for free. And I'll also tell you that it looks like some of them might be still a little bit of work in progress. They might need a little fine tuning. What I would suggest is just leave an issue on his GitHub if you download the widgets. And if you have a problem, just let them know. But be kind, be patient, and understand this is free stuff that an individual is contributing his own personal time to develop and give away to the community. So let's, with that in mind, let's take a look at the widgets. I'll put a link in the description on where you can download these. They are on GitHub, so they're free to examine and explore the way you want. And I'll also make one other point, and that's that they're Lua scripts. And in some of them, there are some color options, but in some there aren't. I found out that by looking in the Lua script, I could change some of the colors to work. For example, he uses some yellow that doesn't work great on a light background, but it does work okay on the top blue bar, for example. So if you want to change colors that don't have a color setting in the widget setup, you might have to dive into the Lua script and make your own changes. That would be my first feedback for offer is that when you have a widget set up, go ahead and include a color setting for the text so the user can make it match their background or their color bar because there's a lot of theme options with Edge TX. To download the widgets, you want to click on this green code button and choose the option download zip. And when you do that, it basically packs up his entire GitHub and downloads it. And the GitHub is comprised mostly of widgets. I have my browser set to put downloads on my desktop. So here's the archive we just downloaded. With the widgets downloaded, we can put the browser away. And the next thing we'll do is connect our radio to our computer. So I'm going to bring the radio screen up. The next thing we'll do is connect our USB cable to the top port on our radio and to our PC, and then select the USB storage option right there in the middle. And that should bring up a file explorer that'll let us put our widgets on our SD card on the radio. I'm just going to move this window over to the side. And the next thing I'll do is open up the zip archive. And you'll notice that we've got this little folder in here called widgets master. We'll open that and then just take the widgets that you want and drop them in your widgets directory. So I'm going to go ahead and do bat analog. I'm going to do get gauge rotary histogram and I want value two and I want flights. So if you want all of them, you can just drag them all over, but I'm just going to use these for my example. So I'm going to drag these and drop them on my widgets folder and let that go. And it's asking me to replace files in the destination because I've already put the, these widgets on my radio. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. I'll replace those files. You shouldn't be prompted for that because you're doing this net new. With that done, we can close all these windows and go back to our radio. Next, we'll disconnect the USB cable from our radio, and now we can get an opportunity to mess around with the widgets. Now, I'm not going to add every single widget. I will add the first one so you get an idea on how to do it, and I'll show you some of the configuration options. But really, what I want to do is just walk you through the different widgets I've already added. In the model I'm currently using, I'm going to press the Tele page down here on the bottom left, and you can see I've already got five screens set up, so I've already got a bunch of widgets set up on this just for the demo. But on my first page, I have nothing. So I'll click on the Setup Widgets button. And the first one we're going to add is the Flight Widget. So what this one does, it does it's a flight counter. And what Offer did is he used some logic to keep track of the number of flights you put on a model, which I think is really cool. I also want to mention that I believe he designed this one to sit up here in the menu bar. But you can put it anywhere on the screen you want. So any size box that you make, it'll work. So the reason I'm using a full screen though is I want you to see the debug information to show the logic that he goes through in order to count your flights. So we'll add flights and my switch is he's using SF. Remember that's the normal lock switch on my radio. I move mine over to the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and select SH for my arm switch. My motor channel is definitely channel three minimum flight duration. The idea behind the minimum flight duration is you have to have the motor armed and your throttle at a higher state than zero 
for this period of time in order to count as a flight. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna lower this all the way down to 10. The other thing I wanna advise you to do is look in the flight widget directory and listen to the wave files because he's got an option here called enable sounds. And I just did a video the other day on Express LRS. And what happened was I completed the requirements for a flight to be logged and it played the audio file. And I thought I was getting some sort of alert on my radio. So just make sure you know what the sounds are. Personally, I don't really want the sounds. This is the flight counter, so I don't want any sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And for the purpose of the video, I'm gonna show you what logic he uses to count a flight. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn debug on. And then once I've done that, we'll escape out. And you can see now that I've got a value of nine and I'll show you where that's set so you can modify that if you want. And here are the debug values. In order to get the flights to register, he uses a couple different logic tricks. First off, he looks at your arming switch. Right now, my arming switch is off. He looks for the motor to be past a certain state, and he looks for you to be receiving telemetry. So I am receiving telemetry. You can see I've got my transmission power, my RX bat, my R quality, my RSS. So I am getting telemetry. The next thing I'll do is put my switch into the on position. So I'm going to arm the airplane. I actually have an airplane behind me too, but I'm going to go ahead and arm it. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is bring the throttle up until this is in the on state. And then you can watch the duration ticker down here. Once it reaches 10, which is what I set for my flight duration, you'll see the flight counter increment to number 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and power up while I hold onto the airplane and we'll let the flight timer increment. There you go, there's a flight increment and you can see that it still counts as flight on. So I'm gonna turn my power off and you can see the switch registers is off now. And then the next thing I'll do is disconnect the battery which should kill the telemetry and change the state to ground. Okay, so power's been off, flight is ending. It's gonna count for a duration of eight and then we'll see ground. And that's it, it kind of resets the entire process. So now next time you plug this airplane in and use this flight timer and go through all of these steps, you'll get a flight increment on your flight counter. We can manipulate this number by pressing the return button to get out of the widget setup screen. Then we'll press the model button and we'll scroll over to global variables. That is this option right here. And offer is using global variable number nine. So see how that's set to number 10. All we have to do is click on this and hit edit. And let's say that I want this value to be, I don't know, 18. We'll click on 18 and say that's how many flights I have on this plane. When we back out of this and go look at our screen, we're now at 18. So if you need to make a correction to your flight count, you can do it by manipulating global variable number nine. Okay, that covers the flights widgets. The next thing we'll do is go back into our telemetry setup and we'll go to page two and we're gonna take a look at the gauge rotary option. So in gauge rotary option, this one is a, it's kind of like a car gauge. So it's got a needle that kind of spins around the, the circle and you can set parameters for the gauge and the value that you want to track. So in my case, I've got RX battery is a telemetry sensor. I'm going to click on this and hit widget settings and show you that you can set your source right here. RX bat is, is the one I'm using. You can set it to anything else you get telemetry values for. And what I did is set my minimum because I've got a four cell battery plugged into this plane right now. I set my min at 14 volts and my max at 17. It really should be about 16.8, but you know, this is just a graphic representation. One of the options that I like on this gauge is this option called high is green. When you put a check in there, what it does is make the high side of the gauge green. So voltage, for example, when you first start out, that's your highest voltage level. You want that to be green. And as your voltage decreases, you want that to move to red. That's what this is all about. That high is green. If you take that check mark out, it puts red on the other side, and you might use that for something like amperage, for example. The next thing I wanna show you is the value to widget. And what this widget does is it uses text on any value you want, and it uses very big numbers that scale to the window that you put it in. And that's what I've got on this one, the blinking one right here, 15.2, that's the value to widget. Okay, to add value to, we'll click on this open spot, we'll hit select widget, and we're gonna go all the way down to value two. There's value two. And I'm gonna pick the option RX bat min. So I wanna know what the low point of my voltage is. And oh, I must've passed it. Where is it? RX bat min, there it is right there. And I'm gonna set this to red. So I'm gonna set that to 31 only. 
and that's it. So now what I've got is RX bat min. This is the low value. And I've got my RX bat as the high value, just in text. I'll show you what this looks like by connecting the plane. If I operate the throttle, we should see the voltage drop down just a little bit. So I'm going to take the throttle lock off and advance the throttle just a little bit. And you can see the voltage start to drop. Okay, that's the first use case for gauge rotary. I've got another one set up too for current. So we'll back out of this screen. We'll move over to number three and I'll hit set up widgets. And I did the same thing here for current. So as I advance the throttle, you'll see the current increase just a little bit on this gauge. There we go, 1.4 amps. And as I move it up a little bit, you'll see the current plus. Hit the new mark at 1.9. And you can also set your ranges on this one as well. So when you go into widget settings, you can set your min amperage to one. In my case, the ESC in this one is rated for 60 as is the motor. So I'll set that to 60. And on this one, I have high is green off. And what that does is puts red on the high spot. So as I get into my high amperage, it hits the red spot on the gauge. Pretty cool, huh? All right, the next one is one of my favorites and that's the bat analog. What I like about this gauge is that he's figured out based on the voltage that I've got a 4S cell in there. Now, the reason I know he's doing a little bit of math is because I don't have a per cell voltage sensor. I just have the RX bat sensor and that's it. So through logic, he's figuring out how many cells are in this plane. So you can see on the on this gauge, I've got 3.8 volts. That's 3.8 volts per cell. And on this one, we've got the cumulative pack voltage. Now, the other cool thing about it is he actually changes the color of the gauge over here on the left. What I've got right now are two 2S packs in series. That's giving me the 15.2. What I'm going to do now is switch the plane over to these 3S batteries and put them in series. And the reason I'm going to do that is because, number one, it'll give us 6S, and you'll see the math show up here. And the second reason is because they're at a higher state of charge. And I want to show you what the gauge does when you're at a higher state of charge in terms of changing color. Okay, I've now connected my two 3S packs in series. So we've got 24.5 volts and he's calculated correctly that it's 6S. And so 4.1 volts per cell, that's about where we are. And 24.5 volts for the total pack voltage. Now I'll click on the widget settings real quick to show you how to switch between the per cell and the pack voltage. It's real easy, simply click on widget settings and hit show total voltage. And when you do that, it'll show the cumulative voltage for the pack. If you leave that value unchecked, it shows you the estimated per cell voltage. It is important to understand this is an estimated per cell voltage. It's an average because if you don't have a per cell sensor, there's no way he can tell you if you have a low cell. So I just want to point that out. It is an estimate. Okay, that's bat analog. And then the next one and the last one is histogram. So we'll get into that by hitting return to get out of the edit screen and I'll hit page right to go to my fifth screen and hit setup widgets and the histogram. This is one where I see some problems and that's that when you first turn this widget on and I'm going to go ahead and back out and go to the main page. So we're not in the edit screen anymore. So here's the main page and here are the problems. There is a scale down here. I've seen it by changing my background color, but somewhere along the line during a widget repaint, I lose these numbers. So the other thing is that he uses the default color he uses here is yellow. And that's very hard to see on my screen on a light color background. So the blue bars are yellow. The active is green. You can fix this by going into the Lewis script and looking for the word yellow and changing it to blue. That's what I did. I would ask offer to figure out what's going on with the scale down here on the X axis and the Y axis. So right now I don't have numbers on either side. So I really don't know what this means other than I have a minimum of negative 60. So I'm not sure if that's the high point or the low point. I'm guessing it's the high point. I'm not sure. So it's a cool little idea because it gives you an RSSI histogram. And again, in the widget settings, you can choose the thing that you want to monitor. So if you wanted to say, make it current, we could go on the telemetry page, hit set up widgets, and then click on the widget and hit widget settings and change the thing that we're monitoring from RSS, say to RQLY, we could do RQLY. For RQLY, you'd want to set the min to zero and the max to 100. Let 
there we go. So there's the max. Okay, so the histogram is populating some information now, and I really like the idea of this. The problem is I really don't know how to interpret the data that I'm seeing. So it's it's link quality, and that should be a scale of zero to 100%, but the values that I see on the screen are things like 1.1, 1.8, 2.6, 3.3, 4.2. I don't know what that means. I think the top numbers are hits. So for example, in the right-hand column, it says 70, 71. Those are probably hits on link quality. And as you move down, like this one says 30 and 13, those are how many hits are in these lower buckets. Okay, the histogram's cool. I think it needs a little more refinement so we can better understand the data that we're seeing a little bit. I definitely like the battery gauge. I think that's very cool. Bat analog is what this one's called because you can get your estimated per cell voltage and your pack voltage. That's always good stuff to know. And it's a nice visual representation. So I think on my standard production airplanes, this would be a really good one to put in one of the windows on the main screen. I like that one a lot. As far as the gauge goes, it's very cool. It's a little novel. I'll tell you that I did fly with this. And one of the downsides about this gauge is that while it's very cool and it's functional, I don't really look at the gauge while I'm flying. And what I would suggest is that you see, I've got current plus here, but the gauge doesn't stay there. I, I think it would be neat if the gauge would monitor like current plus and, and stay pegged there and give me the number. So I could look at the gauge after the flight and see where I am. I did try and look at the gauge during the flight, but it's just, you know, you know, who looks at the screen while you're flying, right? Maybe if you're on FPV and you could put it in some mode that manages your altitude for you, that would be useful. But I don't know how much practical use you'll get out of this while you're actually flying the plane, especially if you're on line of sight, because you really got to keep your eye on the plane. I do think it would be cool if these gauges kept your high and low points. So he does definitely show a couple of different arrows. I think it'd be nice if we showed where the high and low points were and then gave them values on those arrows. So after the flight, we could see the high and low points. And then the flight counter, I like a whole lot. I've never seen an option in Edge that does this and I like the logic he's using. It makes sense to me. I think it can work over time and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. I think it's kind of cool to get an idea how many flights you put on a particular airframe. That's all I've got for these new Edge TX widgets by Offer Shmuley. I'll make sure to put a link in the description so you can download them whenever you want. Thanks again to Offer for making these available and tell me where to get them. If you guys have any issues, make sure to use the GitHub issue option on the website. So if there's a problem, you can let them know what needs to be fixed. I hope you liked the video and I'll remind you if you do like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.